Welcome back to New Day Northwest. My next guest, author and former Seattle Times journalist Putsada Rang, came to the U.S. as a refugee from Cambodia. Her book, Ma and Me, is a moving memoir about love, debt, and duty. Putsada joins me now. Welcome to New Day. Thank you for being here. Well, thanks so much for having me, Amity. Your story is, is phenomenal. You were only 11 months old when your family fled Cambodia on a crowded boat. You came very close to not surviving that trip. Will you tell us that story? Absolutely. It was one of the very first stories that my mom told me when I was growing up, which is that when our family escaped in 1975, we had very little food and water on this ship for 23 days at sea. And being that I was only 11 months old and there not being much food, I was close to dying. The captain of the ship actually thought that I had already died. And so he came and told my mom, listen, this is an overcrowded boat. You've got to throw your baby overboard. Oh my. And my mom is very stubborn. She refused and she begged the captain to let her wait until we reached land so that she could bury her baby in the earth. In fact, she was just buying time because when I asked her later, did you think I was dead? She said, I had a little bit of hope that you were still alive. Oh my gosh. I mean, you're going to make me cry. This is crazy. I mean, my, so you're told this story as a child. Right. What, what did you take from that? Well, as a kid, you know, growing up in Corvallis, Oregon, mm -hmm. where I grew up American, for all I knew, yeah. I didn't know that I was anything other than American until I went back to Cambodia as a teenager for the very first time. And so hearing that story as a kid, I really internalized this single story of myself, yeah. that I was kind of the weak kid among all my mothers, all my parents' children, and I was the one who always had to be taken care of. and. I basically had to spend the rest of my life trying to fight my way out of that single narrative. Got it, right? I mean, especially when you're told that narrative at such a young age. Right. Wow. Um, despite, <laughs> I mean, it's gotta be so hard. Well, how is your relationship with your mom? <laughs> right now, it's interesting. You know, we had to start over because of course, one of the central conflicts in my memoir has to do with me being gay, mm -hmm. which is not particularly part of what it means to be a great Cambodian daughter, or, and which is what I strive to be when I was growing up hearing that story of almost dying when I was a baby, and it was my mom who was the one that saved me. And so, um, really in a sense, just trying to override some of these key ideas of who I am, what's my place in the world, mm -hmm. and my mom right now, we have a different relationship ever since I came out, but I think if I've taken anything away from this moment and my life and the t decisions I've made is that we get one chance to live our lives and yeah. we've got to claim our space. I, I, that is so beautifully said. You have to claim our space. And it was, you found your space here in Seattle. That's where you came in your 20s <laughs> That's right. uh, to work as a journalist. You found your sexuality here. How did, by the way, how was the reaction from the family when they first found out? Well, my siblings were fantastic. They're uh, really my core. They're, mm -hmm. They've always been so solid for me. My mom, she reacted interestingly. She actually told me for the very first time when I came out in mm -hmm. my early 20s to her, she said, I love you, which was the first time she'd said those words to me because in our culture, we are not, um, we don't express love verbally, we express love through food. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of shocked me. But I think I really misunderstood that moment. When she said she loved me, I thought that it meant she accepted me for being gay when really that was not the case. Mm. And so the reaction came almost 20 years later after I came out to my mom, in which she basically in so many words told me she was ashamed of me oh, being wow. gay. And I, and I felt that over the years and I understood that. And so part of my reckoning in my life is how do I, how do I live my authentic self while maintaining fidelity to my own culture and country yeah. of origin? Wow, I mean, I have to say, it sounds like it impacted your relationship with your mom a lot. You couldn't even really have a true authentic relationship with her, I think, it sounds yeah. like. Yeah, we've had to rebuild. We've, we've definitely had to rebuild our relationship. My mom and I have always been close, mm -hmm. and that closeness was really born out of that well, in fact, my origin story yeah. of being saved by her. But when I came out, that closeness, the relationship began to sever in a serious way that mm. I wasn't quite sure 
how to recover from and I'm and I'm still trying I you know I think that what I if I've learned anything especially for the child of immigrants and refugees it's this idea that um, you know, we do have to reach for our own sense of agency at whatever cost, even if that cost is a very painful one and that cost is losing people we love. I mean, you, the, the road you've walked, the things that you've learned and that you're sharing are life-changing ideas for a human, for a person's own self. I have to say, one of the overarching questions in this book that really got me that I think gets a lot of mothers and daughters is that idea of what do we owe the women who gave us life? Because we really do have this deep sense of, of, of loyalty and fealty to these women and to our mothers. How has your perspective on that evolved? It's really changed a lot. I grew up most of my life believing in my core that I owed my mother everything. Not only did this woman give me life, she also saved my life. Mm -hmm. So w there was this added pressure to just be perfect for her yeah. and to live my life for her and to make her happy yeah. above and beyond my, my own self. What I realized over the course of writing this book actually was that we owe it to ourselves to be happy yeah. more than we owe it to our mothers, that our mothers are there to love us, nurture us, mm -hmm. raise us. We are our own selves to be happy for ourselves and that if we can find that for ourselves, we should be confident that our mothers will be happy. Yeah, we should. I have to say, the one thing I've learned from, from talking to you in this discussion in this book is actually, as a parent, to be careful what stories we tell our children. That's right. And how they can have a lasting effect. Your mom was probably just telling you the story over and over, not thinking much of it, but it changed you. Absolutely. Well, I think that one of the things, and I'm so glad you asked that question, one of the things that I grapple with in this memoir and that I grapple with in life still is this idea of how easy it is for us to become caged within our own narratives. Yeah. And what are the ways we try to fight against that and try to break free from these narratives that, that are spoken to us either by our families or that society has of us or that our cultures or circumstance. All these things kind of conspire to create this cage, keeping us trapped within a, a certain way of being. And how do we claim our selfhood ultimately? I love that. So many powerful and liberating ideas in our selfhood in this book. Thank you so much for your time and for talking Thank to you, us. Everybody. And if you'd like to hear more from Putsada, she has a book event next Tuesday, June 20th. It starts at 7 o'clock at Elliott Bay Book Company. Go check it out. All right. <laughs>